Hey, this your boy Pimp from the Franchise Boys. You already know I'm on Ugly Money Podcast. What up, what up? I am Ugly Money Nietzsche, and welcome to yet another episode of the Ugly Money Podcast and my special guest of the evening, Frederick Douglass High School's own. Yes, I've done my research. Member and producer of the legendary rap group Franchise Boys. Show your love one time for Pimpin! Yes, So the question I got to ask, what it do, what the question it everybody want to know, who was pimping before pimping was pimping? Come on. <laughs> who was pimping before pimping was pimping? Let's go. Um, let me start off. I was that guy, man. Like, I was that guy, a hustler. Yeah, it is. You feel what I'm saying? Like, basically, I could turn anything into that cash, basically. Come on, man. And, you know, a lot of people don't know that, you know, I was good with technology. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? And, like, before all this music shit, bro, it was like, you know, I could tell you the story on how I met Polly on how everything started. Yeah, just, yeah. It, oh, we, it, need, it just, we need to get into it. It's just crazy, right? Because, you know, like when I was 16, bro, my mama, you know, she got locked up for check fraud. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know. She was on it early. Yeah. On this, it early. This, before, this before all the scammers and swipers. Right. So, yeah. you know, when she got locked up at 16, bro, you know, I had to become a man mm-hmm. at a young age. You feel? So, it's like, you know, I couldn't tell the rent office and. Oh, they were going to evict my ass, yeah, pretty yeah. much, basically. So, you know, before she got down, before she got locked up, she bought me a computer. So that was the best thing mom and dude did for me. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So basically what I did, you know, I had a little partner because I ain't so, you know, I ain't so dope for, I ain't so weed before, but that wasn't me. Okay. You know, I was the scamming type. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The original. Exactly. <laughs> scamming so, on the deal, the exactly. IBM. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I figured out how to cut on, like, this one cell phones had just started popping. Okay. And um, the two ways. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So, one of my other partners, he used to write checks, and he used to get a whole bunch of phones, mm-hmm. but he didn't know what to do with them. So, I had a chick who showed me, like, a little, a little way to um, turn the phones on, because, you know, everything was, like, through the phone, exactly. it wasn't remote. You yeah, know what exactly. I'm mm-hmm. So shit, I figured that shit out. So I'm turning on all the phones. I can say, bro, back in the day, bro, the whole temp, Allen Temp, <laughs> had pimp wireless. <laughs> <laughs> like for real, for real, bro. Like they had to come see me to pay their bill, activate everything. Like for real, for real, bro. Like I was that guy. Wow. So I'm getting money. So like, and you gotta understand, bro. Like I'm playing basketball and going to school at the same time. You feel me? Damn right. So I do like a real business mind. I'm like, I'm real business mind. So I got my little partner who got kicked out of school, got the whole apartment set up like a little office. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? He ain't know while I'm at school. Because people still come trying to pay still their bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You got so a whole shit, business running. Whole business. Yes, sir. So, you know, just to fast forward through that, you know, how I met Palais was through um, JV Trials. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy because back then, like, Allen Temple and Born Home, that shit was like Crips and Blood. Exactly. Ain't you feel like what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, by me even just having a conversation with him, just kicking it with him was crazy. You know what I'm saying? But, wow. you know, through that basketball, we built a relationship. And one day, we left school. You know what I'm saying? We cut class. And on the way to the office, because I wanted to show him my office. And he let me hear that freestyle um, money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I live. I die for the M-O-N-E-Y. Yeah. And right there at that moment, bro, like... I wasn't even really thinking about music, bro. But right there at that moment, like, that shit inspired me. Like, man, fuck that. I'm going to be the baby of this shit. I and don't want to rap. And that's when, you, that's when you knew it was time to get to it. Exactly. Now, it's crazy. We had uh, we had Parlay on the show. He spoke very highly of you, man. And uh, he, 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 uh, he gave us a story about how he, he you know, he went to, he went off to school. He went off to college. Right. And he had knew you, you know what I'm saying, on the block or whatever. He had went on to college. And he just randomly just run into you in, 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 in college and didn't realize that you was there. And that's the universe, bro, because that, that shit's so crazy because I went to a whole nother school because mm-hmm. in 12th grade, I got cut. You know what I'm saying? I had something, you know, the coach had something against me. Yeah. And when I went to school, shit, it's like we doing orientation. And it's like that man just, you know what I'm saying? I thought, you know, they show you the classroom and shit. Mm-hmm. You go to your dorm. I'm making a beat. The first yeah. thing I do is set up my computer. First thing. First thing. So I'm making a beat. So I'm trying to imitate that Michael Myers. That doom, 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 yeah. doom, 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 doom. That put the little doom. Yeah. Doom, put all that shit in on. So I'm like, shit. I put the speaker in the window. Come on. 
You know what I'm saying? I was like, shit, but yeah, these girls out there, yeah, they y'all finna hit me. Yeah. It's a musician in this. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know yes, sir. So I'm like, boom. So I'm making a beat. I just feel the top of my shoulder. I turn around. It's Pile God damn. He's like, yeah, nigga, I'm in college. Trapping that Pile A made it to college, God damn. And I swear on God, bro, like, we made that song right there. He like, boy, that song right there, that beat right there go hard with that money. So I remember that shit, bro. I'm like, hell yeah, you want to do it right now? Wrap the cord, the mic around the arm, the little light. Had that bit hanging down like, you know, how the boxing. Yes, Let's sir. get ready yes, to sir. run, bro. Yes, sir. And we wrapped that bitch all the way through, bro. And it was like, it was crazy because at that time, we couldn't punch. <laughs> it wasn't no punching. It, was it wasn't no take. do the hook, do the burst, and stop. Nah. Uh -huh. We had to wrap. He had to wrap it all the way through. And if he, he messed up one time. And, man, after that, man, we had the college. We did a talent show. We had the college popping, man. And I left. I dropped out. I mm. said, fuck this shit. <laughs> and I went home to push the song Money. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A year later, they got kicked out. And by the time he came back, it was already like a little buzz. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was already a little buzz. So when he came back, we started doing talent shows. And that buzz started. Shout out to T-Rock, man. Because one thing about T-Rock at the T-Rock. T-Rock. Like, we won't be here today if it wasn't for T-Rock. Because back in the day, T-Rock was that nigga. Yeah, he was. You feel what I'm saying? You had to see T-Rock. You know what's crazy about the whole pool palace? You know, I remember being on the outside looking in mm -hmm. from, uh, you know, being from out of town and wanting to go to the pool palace. You know what I'm saying? And just, and just, and, 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 and really imagining thinking that it was just this huge club with no. bright lights and you know I'm thinking this shit the king of diamonds the way <laughs> the way the, you know the, the, on the outside oh. world looking in you would think the pool palace was like the king of diamonds like it would live oh. you know what I'm saying because you had all these pool palace songs and da, da 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 and they rapping on top of the pool palace and then I finally had my opportunity to go to the west side pool palace <laughs> In his prime. Uh, what? <laughs> Man, listen to me. I got way. I got got for five dollars for parking. Oh. Cause it was a goddamn J out there talking about five dollars a park. My dumb ass, I'm green. Right. First time here. I don't even I'm like, okay, I guess that's who they got parking. I gave the nigga five dollars. He just disappeared. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? Hit the on your uh, ass. Tell me how the uh essential the pool palace was to your come up and ascension of, of music in I'm, that era. I say the pool palace uh, was very important um, in my career because it was an outlet for the West Side. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was a place that, you know, people go to, you know, search for talent and showcase their talent. You feel what I'm saying? So, basically, I look at the pool palace as an opportunity. And, you know, that's why I say T-Rock, you know, he offered that opportunity yeah. as well because he didn't have to play our music. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? It was crazy. That money song was like the first song, like independently, that was on the radio. It was. No, 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 not not money, but White T was. Yeah, 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 White yeah. I'm saying like uh, that that got that kind of radio play. Now let's 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 go back before we get to the White T. Let's go back to how does it, how does this cell phone pimping mobile get to the point of making beats and, and and how do you get that to that point of of actually getting into production. Okay, well, so how I got into production? Well, basically, you know, after I got I got kicked out, I went to Thera High School. Mm -hmm. And, you know, playing basketball, I ran into K-Rab. Goddamn K- K-Rab, we gotta get you on the show. Yeah. You I coming up in too many of these damn conversations. Yeah, so K-Rab that came up in the four of my interviews already. So, We're gonna get him on the show. So, so this look. crazy, right? Yeah, so yeah. I already knew K-Rab from, from um, Adamville, you know what I'm saying? And, um, like one day I'm, I'm walking from practice, just walking through school, and he in the classroom, you know, school over yeah. with, and he on the um, computer making a beat. So I walk in there and be like, damn, bro, what the hell you doing? What that is? He like, what that did Fruity Loop. I like, Fruity Loop? So I look, <laughs> so he be like, this is all you do, you just do this. Woo, 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 woo. Soon I go, I, I leave practice, I go home. Yeah. Boom. Figure that shit out, get on the AOL, that dial up. Right. <laughs> the old dial up yeah, mobile. Yeah, you got and, mail. <laughs> exactly. And I figure out, like, I'm good with the computer, so I figure out how to download that shit. So mm -hmm. I download the demo version. Boom. Just start making beats. Making beats. And that's how I run into Jilly. Wow. It's crazy because doing the same thing, making beats, put the um, speaker in my window. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Showcasing this shit. Mm -hmm. And one day I go outside in the temp. 
and Jizz will walk up to him like, bro, I be hearing you, bro. Like, what you what you making beats or something? I'm like, yeah, yeah. He like, bro, you need to fuck with me, bro. I'm trying to, I'm trying to goddamn do my little rap career, bro. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? They called me B Jizz. Mm-hmm. That we called it so they had two little open face, <laughs> open face goals right there. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I'm like, shit, all right. So at that time, I couldn't figure out how I was going to record. Because mm-hmm. I had the, the software to make the beats, but I ain't had the software to make the um the record. Oh, so no Fruit Loose. You couldn't record the Fruit Loose probably back then. Probably, probably couldn't. I ain't like, know. Yeah, probably could, yep. So the first thing I do, I try to figure it out. Boom. So I figured, I don't know what software I download. <laughs> but I downloaded a software to yeah. record. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? We I remember the first song we um, record. I had a mic. It was like an old computer mic with the flat bottom. Come on, the little, come on, man. You know, come up off the desk. Yeah, yes, I sir. Now I've been there. <laughs> I've been there before. Yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. And the first song we recorded was um, "My Pockets on Zero. I'm still a G though. I got to get though. Come on, I got to get though. Used to ride around the hood playing that shit <laughs> all day. And what's so crazy about that, bro? I had a kill some field, a small ass kill some field with house speakers in the trunk. Had like I'm fine like that, bro. Had yeah. That shit hooked up. Hooked up. And the, the um, motherfucker, they had the goddamn copper wires back there. This man, shit. listen. And you find a way to hook that man, shit up. Hook that shit up. Come and on. I had the motherfucker, the house monitor, not Come the monitor, on, the man. radio back there. So when you cut that bitch up, you gotta pop the trunk, cut that bitch up. <laughs> And that's how we did that. But when I went to college, you know what I'm saying? Jizzle was, he was hard, bro. Like, damn, bro, you fucking up my rap career, bro. Like, damn, bro. Fuck that college shit. Yeah. And then when I ran, ran back into Pale, so it's like the universe had this shit already on the line. Crazy. And that's how I met Buddy, too. Like, I already knew Buddy from Doug. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he's, you know, he's older than me. Yeah. He graduated before me, so I really yeah. didn't, didn't, didn't know him like yeah. that. And Pale really made him a rapper. R.I.P. to my guy, buddy, man. You know Salute, what I'm saying? Man. R.I.P., bro. Yeah, man. Nah, um, let's uh, let's let's get to the point of, of of constructing these hits. Now, when y'all are in here and you get to the point of making this this beat that will become the white T beat, mm-hmm. give me uh, take us back to that session of creating that song. Okay, like like I say, it's the universe because what happened was. <clears throat> Okay, me and Pale, we can't, everybody can come back from school. I got an apartment in the temp, my own apartment. Mm-hmm. Got the studio set up. So, Pale invited some of his partners to the studio one day, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they doubled back the next day and stole nothing but the computer. Huh. That's crazy, right? Like, they ain't getting no clothes. I had, I had weed and all, they ain't getting none of that, just the computer. So I called Pale, like, bro, bro, somebody, a nigga just stole the computer, woo, 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 woo. He like, bro, I know who got it. Huh. So he go get the monitor, not the the bar. Mm-hmm. So we got all the music gone. So my homeboy, Tory, he had a studio. He like a big, big time, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He doing that thing. And we go to his studio, finna record another song. So I'm in there, so Lil Yola in there. Wow. DJ Yola. Wow. And the song he recording is, I ain't gonna let up. Wow. This how crazy this shit is, bro. He recording that song, I ain't gonna let up. So we in there, so we like, he like, bro, you gotta wait um, till his session over with, then I got you. So I go into the office. This is the same day. Same day. Wow. I go into the office, download Fruit Loops on the office computer, make the white T beat, just making it. Buddy and they'll just rap, Buddy pull up, we just chilling, vibing, boom, boom, boom. Then Pale get there. Pale, you know, he in the trap. He yeah. just beat the trap down. Mm-hmm. So he come there with a wad full of money, throw back, yeah. just flexing, like, what's up, bro? Yeah. Yeah. Nigga, I just killed the trap. You know what yes, I'm saying? Sir. Yes, flexing sir. on y'all. Nigga, y'all see this nigga 500 on their yes, dick. Sir. Nigga, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we like, man, fuck that shit. Yeah, you talking about nigga? We cleaning my white teeth. Ah! <laughs> Buddy, yo. In my white teeth. Oh, wow. Yo. I'm like, boy, that's it. Boy, that's it, bro. You feel what I'm saying? He be like, boy, we need to, Pale, you write the hook. Everybody just write a verse of what the goddamn we doing our white tee. And like me, I wasn't really, I ain't no rapper. Uh-huh. I wasn't even trying to get in this shit for yeah. the rap. But I was like, shit, I got a whole bunch of shit, shit I can say in my mm-hmm. white tee. You feel Boom. Man, we going that bit. He get done. Yup. In my <laughs> white tee. Yup. I slang in my, damn, bang it. Nigga, we like, man, this shit a hype, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But we ain't really believing it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's cool, you know what I'm saying? It could be a little fun record, a little album. Mm-hmm. Fun record, exactly. Fuck it, let's take it to the pool pad and see what they think. We take it to the pool pad that night. 
Man, they rapping that shit like they already heard it. Come shit. on, man. Wow, what is it? And that shit just exploded for now, bro. That's crazy. That shit exploded that's, that's for now. That's the universe right now. That's the universe. But it, it's so crazy. Look, I'm going to tell you, bro, because we got a deal from White T, right? And how we did it, like, you know, I got to give it, I got to give a shout out to Parlay because, like, me, I was ready to sign. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? The first thing. Damn right. Sign me up. Let's go. Let's go. Come on with it, bro. So goddamn. Probably like, nah, bro. We're going to see what all these folks talking about. And we're going to go with the best one. Mm -hmm. So we had we had like a bidding war. And like Universal, they gave up 400000 cash money up front, everything, into my account. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because I'm like the CEO of everything. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. straight to me, boom. We cut the check, boom. And when it was time to do the second single, I had already made white. I mean, oh, I think they like. And the reason I made oh, I think they like me was because everybody had started coming out with pink tea, green tea, I blue, that. all this shit. And what really pissed me that. off when them niggas made that black tea. Oh yeah. Cause that was gonna be our remix. Wow. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, man, fuck that. So one day, one morning, I had woke up, bro. I repeat to my homeboy Jesse. He walked up to me and said, bro, you know what you need to do? You need to sample yourself saying. Um, oh, I think they like me. Yep. But them hoes love that shit. They love that I say for real. Soon I got them walk out, go do that shit. Oh, I think they like me. Oh, I think they took that shit out of white tea and yeah. put it in the beat. Made the beat around that shit. God Boom. Damn right. Did my verse. So I was like, damn, who ain't on white tea? Jizzle. Told Jizzle to come do a verse. Boom. My little homeboy Peanut. I was like, damn, I need to put him on song. But I couldn't, he wasn't picking up the phone. Mm -hmm. So I took a verse off a song he did the day before. Oh, come on. And put that bitch on there. Wow. And there we go. Hit. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, peanut, you, you boy, you better love this man for, for life. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you, man. I, I was just with my dog the other day, man. Shout out Young Nut, man. Yeah, that's Damn. crazy. You took his song, you're like, I'm gonna, you going to get on this song. Yeah, dude. yeah. And um, so let, let, let's go back like to the um, to the point of the deal signing and things of that nature. Like, tell me that whole that whole process and how, you know that 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 just that nuance Which of one? signing Which a major deal? deal. Well, with the first one, what was it, two thousand four? We yeah. signed. Yeah. Um, all I can say it was a it was a great experience. Like coming from nothing, bro. You know what I'm saying? It was like like I won a championship. Like I made it into the NBA. You know what I'm saying? I and imagine. like. When we first got that first deal, I'm, I'm the youngest out of everybody. Mm -hmm. I was 19, getting all this money. You see what I'm saying? And like, that's the first thing I learned um, in the whole situation, the business, bro. Mm -hmm. Before I even touched anything, I learned how to how this business work, how to make money off this shit. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, right. So I already had shit set up before I even signed it, then publishing everything. Like, the whole franchise boy, franchise production was signed to me. Still signed to me. Respect. You feel what I'm saying? So I already knew it, and... It, just, it was crazy, bro. Like, I enjoyed that shit. Like, young, fucking up money. We yeah. blowed a lot of, of money. Of course, of course. We blowed a lot of money. It's, it's part of it. It's part of <laughs> it, probably blowed the whole thing. Talk, talk to me about JD. Oh, man, JD, man, that's like, I can say that, that's my stepdad, you can say, Spirit. man, because, like, right now I have a room in So So Def. Like, that's where I work out of. You see what I'm saying? And, like, JD, he didn't, um. We need you on the show, JD. Just putting that out there. Yeah. Free like, plug. Man, they didn't put me in a position where, you know, like, I'm grateful. Like, T.I. calls him the wizard. He is. He is the wizard because he see things before it happens. You see what I'm saying? And, like, I was just talking to him the other day. We in the studio with um Anthony, Anthony uh, Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And he was like, bro, don't you know Kanye used to be in that room where you at? I like, bro, don't tell him no shit like that. Bro. Come on. Don't tell him no shit like that. He was like, for real, for real, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just wow. very appreciative because they, like, they rock with me. You know what I'm saying? Even Bow Wow, his son. You know what I'm saying? They put yeah. me on TV. You know what I'm saying? And different placements. Like, yeah. Shit, it's love over here. So it see, it see, it see. Um, and, and that's one thing I can say about So So Def. J Jermaine Dupree was a visionary before, really before its time. And and, and the, the things that he saw, and, and the waves, and the and, and the things that he, you know he instilled, and not just Atlanta hip hop, but just the, the world was amazing. I mean, he literally had kids wearing their clothes backwards. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And uh and y'all had us wearing very long white tees. Exactly. And what's crazy about it is I remember when that song came out, they didn't used to have the tall tee. Exactly. And I remember the song dropping and of course everybody running to get exactly. a oversized tee. And, and I remember Foot Locker 
I think they had the red tag on it. It was said tall T. Exactly. Did they give y'all a piece of that? Well, no, nah, we didn't. We didn't get a piece man. of that because each, <laughs> each individual. Because y'all started that, man. We did. Yes, sir. We did, and you know, I just want to put this out there because a lot of people be trying to compare us to D4L. You okay. know what I'm saying? But it's a totally big difference because you know, even though we came out with white T, we changed the music game, Definitely. and we changed the fashion game. Definitely. You see what I'm saying? Even dancing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like real talk, like, you know, it, white tees were here before us, but they wasn't wearing it like we was wearing that Definitely. shit. Definitely. Yeah, no more for coming down to your ankle, bro. I remember. I remember. You know what I'm saying? I like remember. for real, for real, bro. We had the whole like everything big. I remember walking, 42s. In, the, I remember walking in the foot locker, bro. And a, 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 a medium white tee was about a triple X, but it was then it said tall tee that was down to your goddamn knees, bro. And it had to be it had to be at least halfway down your goddamn uh, uh, thigh for it to be cool. Exactly, you know bro. what I'm saying? And like you know, like bro, I ain't did I haven't did too many interviews, bro. Like you, like Respect. I ain't did a, probably an interview in a couple of years, bro. Respect. Like real talk, and you know I be seeing a lot of stuff that been going on and where the sound and, and this come from, like. Be for real, for it, it came from me, bro. Because yeah. that laptop, I mean, that computer my mama got me, bro, mm -hmm. and that few little, it was the how I was, you know, touching up them sounds. I had default sounds, bro, and I, I you wow. know, what I'm saying, made the motherfucker how I wanted to sound, and it created that snap sound. You feel what I'm saying? Ain't nothing but snap of shit. You know what Ooh, I'm wait, that's that, 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 that's gonna lead us to our. That's a perfect segue into our next segment of. Uh, I was gonna ask who created the snap sound and and uh, and, and and that whole, you know, the. Snap, where they where they pin this snap music? Yeah, to be honest, like I don't know, like the media came out with snap. Yeah, like to be honest, we was calling it trap music, not trap music, but but hood music. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because we was rapping about what's going what go on in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. If you listen to White T, it's nothing friendly about this nope. shit. We slang, I I bang. Yep, you feel me? Like real talk, it's you gotta listen shit. to those lyrics. Yeah, bro. it's a catchy ass hood song. That's really what it is. And you know, it just it just crazy, bro. That a lot of people try to take credit for it, but a lot of people know where it come from because a lot of these people was in the studio with me. DJ, um, yo, man, I had a whole album before he even popped. Two, three albums. Wow. Like, like real talk, I can show you a picture right now. <laughs> Shout out, yo, <laughs> with, man. With, with yo. all, man, free my boy Yola, man. Yeah, like, man. He, it's so crazy because when he got out the first time, he was in the studio with me. Wow. And I don't know what happened in between. Yo, he was he was going to be colored. Yeah, I truly believe. I remember that record. That record still go off in the club today. Yeah, every verse, bar for bar, you can sing that whole song. People gonna say, "I just don't give a fuck." Yeah, you know, and, and, and for him to have just a short, to not reach his potential of his rap career, man, it's 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 unfortunate because I know that nigga would have been huge. Yeah, that's crazy too. Because I had an opportunity to sign with he go um he was about to sign with me for a moment. Yeah, but he signed with my partner, now, you know. Yeah, shouts out to Yola, man. Free that boy Yola, man. So, 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 where, what made you put a snap in a beat? Well, it wasn't, where, you know, it wasn't the snail, it wasn't a piccolo, it wasn't a, it wasn't a clap. It was, because White T didn't have the snaps. The snaps mm -hmm. came a little later. Even, oh, oh, I think they liked me. But it made you want to snap. It wasn't the snap, bro. It was the sound of the music. It was different. And like I just, like I said, it was the way I was, Doing my, my my beats, you know what I'm saying? Like using basic sound. Every night they really were simple beats, but they exactly. were, they, they, were, they were infectious. Like you would you, exactly. Yeah, you can you get you, know get, you people, couldn't get rid of that motherfucker. Exactly. People weren't used to, and it was coming from a computer. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? So it's like everybody used to beats coming from the MP. That sound from the MP is a different sound. Mm -hmm. So that shit coming from a, a Fruity Loops and this weird ass computer little sound. That different. shit was different. Yeah. That shit was different. Like, what the yeah. hell is that? But that motherfucking bass used to quake. Exactly. <laughs> you had he got that little ass, little puny little melodies, but that motherfucking bass. <laughs> exactly. Because I, I don't know how to play no piano. Yeah. Bro. Like, I just really hear it. And I, it's a placement game. Yeah, just it is. placing that shit. Crazy. You know man, you know, um, legendary is all you can say, man. You know, and uh, if anybody doesn't give you your flowers, you know what I'm saying? We're going to give you your flowers and roses. Appreciate he had the that. Ugly Mother podcast today, man, and, and you are a legend in your own right, period. Um, you have been on top of that mountain in places that uh, all of, a lot of us could only dream to be, you know what I'm saying? To have a record 
and in a movement that that shakes the world, that defines how uh, people <clears throat> dress, you know, how people dance, and goddamn what Foot Locker puts on their damn shells. <laughs> and they it's started damn to ban impressive. white tees from school. They banned. Them. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember. So. I remember. I mean, you know, they just banned white tees from clubs. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you can't come in here with that. Like, you know, you got to have something on it. Exactly. I remember going to the club and, and and having a white tee on. They said, you can't wear that in there. And my homie going to get a Sharpie and writing something on it. <laughs> just because we have to go back to the car. Like, we literally was writing something on it. Like, it ain't, white, it ain't, it ain't plain white tee. Like, and y'all, y'all definitely, uh, <laughs> crazy, no, right we now. did that. Like, dead ass. Like, it was several times you go to a club and you can't wear no, you can't wear no plain white tee. Right. Yeah, you know, but you know that's what all that's what all the trap niggas used to want to wear. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So if you got a whole bunch of niggas walking in white tees, probably a fight won't break out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it when is. you in the trap, shit, yeah. police pull up. Hey, you check out the hey, description: <coughs> white tee, a blue jean, everybody. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually smart now that yeah. you think about it. Now uh, let's get to this uh, love growing up, growing up, uh, growing hip-hop up, hip-hop. yeah, growing up hip hop. How did that situation come about? Um, well, how it came about, well, actually it came about through JD because um, JD invited me to the studio to work on Bow Wow album. So, you know, working on his album, me and Bow Wow built a relationship and basically, you know, um, they wanted to document him making the album. Mm-hmm. So that's how I got on the show. Respect. And, you know, in the corporate world, they didn't really know about rap, so they really didn't know exactly who I was. Mm-hmm. So over time, I'm th- I'm like three seasons in, mm-hmm. uh, so it's like the first season they didn't know. Second season, oh wow, <laughs> that's real. him. That's that, him. That's the guy from that song that we know. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then like we did like a, they put they gave us like five more episodes. They gave me a little more um, TV time. Like, Whoa, he's funny as well. He got he's some great personality. Yeah. So third season, you know, um, I got with Diamond from Crime Mob. Mm-hmm. We can so, talk about. So you know, it's like. Oh my God, we, we have to we have to give them a bigger slot. Now, 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 yeah. <laughs> Come on, we got. Come on, with. how about that chance? Like, oh yeah, yeah, you're damn you damn right, man. Come on, with. It. All right, so you said uh, you said a name, a hood princess in her own right, and a legend in her own right, Miss uh, Miss Diamond from Crime Mob. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I I remember those records, the Knuck a Few Bucks, and the, uh, the a nose. lot of them. Oh man, it was just, yeah. it was just so many of them, man. Uh, you know. It's kind of it's kind of like what what, what J, J D got uh got Janet or whatever man how you pull that with well, big dog man I guess Pippin is Pippin for real man oh yeah believe that <laughs> you, a t- you a slick motherfucker boy because every nigga every teenage nigga wanted one of them crime mob girls growing up you well, feel see, that I'm gonna tell you bro like I had Diamond doing the white tea time wow so it was like it was crazy because that's how we met. Um, I had a show at Cascade Skating Ring. Ooh, they had a show. Talk there. about it. They had a show there too, and we met at a gas station. I didn't go in the gas station, but she came to the car like, "Oh, you want gonna come inside?" Oh wow! Like, I know I needed to. <laughs> that right sounded like her too. Exactly. <laughs> so we got cool after that. We started having shows and stuff together. So we built a relationship, and we had a, you know, relationship on the low. Right. But you know what kind of destroyed that? I didn't want to go public. Mm-hmm. Because you know I was a little older, mm-hmm. you know, and you know we were teenagers, so I was exactly. like, "Shit, it gonna look good for you, but for yeah. me, yeah, she, yeah, yeah." Now I feel, I feel. So you know, she made that transition on um, with Scrap because she was signed with Scrap, but you know, you know, moved on. And we <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just being quiet. I'm just, I'm just being quiet. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. She made the transition. Go ahead. Go we ahead. Made the transition. You know yeah. what I'm saying. We we were, um, remain cool and. We linked again like a year ago. Um, JD has set up the Essence Festival. Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. And I met her at the um, rehearsal. We met again, and she was like, oh, all that shit. I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, baby, what's happening? She was like, yeah, I'm a big girl. No. Huh. Like, oh, okay. Huh. Huh. <laughs> huh. Oh, you big now. <laughs> Boy, you talking to the right one. Hey, so I feel like she tried my game. Huh. I'm like, hey, what's happening? Goddamn right. And, you know, we made it. We made it shape. Well, you know, you know, she made the transition back. Yeah. <laughs> Shouts out to Diamond, Shout man. Out, what's we need you on the show. Shouts yeah. out to Diamond, man. 
Nah, bro, you 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 have had a, a dope run, not just as a career, man, at, at, as of life, my brother. Yeah. Your uh, your re- your life resume is dope. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, and, and that's something to be proud of. You know, but uh, this is the Ugly Money Podcast, and we salute the the process of success. Everything between your first dollar to your first million. Now I know during this time of this 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 illustrious life and career that you have lived, there has been some times that shit didn't go right. There have been some doors shut in your face. There have been some times that people told you no, and it seemed like everything wasn't so peachy cream. Can you tell us about one of those times and how you pulled yourself up out of it? I'm going to tell you right now. Like, right now, I'm going through um, something crazy in my life. Like, right now, because, you know, when you're a celebrity, there's a lot of people have their hands out or trying to get you for something. You feel what I'm saying? So, like, right now, I have that with my baby mom. Like, I haven't seen my son probably since... Last Christmas, bro. Sound like a Fujiano song. You feel what I'm saying? But it's just like, you know, when I got with Diamond, like, she always hated Diamond. You know what I'm saying? I got back with Diamond, mm. and, like, I I feel, I feel like she's one of my biggest haters, my baby mom. Wow. You feel what I'm saying? And she always wanted me to fail, be a regular person. <laughs> nah, for real, for real, bro. And I never let that shit happen. You feel what I'm saying? Just think about all that. I just drown myself in work. Facts. You feel what I'm saying? That'd be a distraction for me, and just by me doing that, I'm getting all the success. Well, you know, know, you know, everybody, everybody ain't gonna make it, man. Everybody, ain't, everybody ain't ready for what you ready for, and everybody, you know, can't comprehend. Everybody don't see the bigger picture. Exactly. You know, some people have narrow minds, and they can only see what's in front of them. They don't see the the large grand scale of things or whatever. Like, hey, you know, I'm trying to, you know, lay something down for generational wealth for my kids and and, and their kids and their kids and so forth and so forth. And I never got that. Um, about some kind, you know, some women sometimes, uh, and not all women, but just some women that want to try to deter a man from going after that big one, right. to going after that dream, going after the big bag, you know what I'm saying? Right. Wealth, generational wealth. Because, you know, we, we, we as a people have to stop leaving our kids bills when we pass. Exactly. We need to leave them businesses and credit scores and equity and, 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 you know. And, I totally agree. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Properties and things of that nature. We have to get out of that. And unfortunately, a lot of times, man, you know, it'd be, it'd be the people that's in the circle that, that, that want to see you not do it. And now that, that's facts. And that's why I grind like I grind, bro, because, like, I don't have nobody to depend, depend yeah. on, bro. Like, my mama did, daddy did. Sister out of town. If I fail, I fail, bro. You feel what I'm saying? So, shit, I got to go hard. And that's the mindset I'm in. Well, brother, what don't kill you make you stronger. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and you damn sure, and, 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 we, and we don't have no weak niggas on the Ugly Money Podcast. Hell so, God nah. damn, you're doing something right, baby boy. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Please let these folk know uh, what you got coming up, what we can look forward to from Pimpin' Man before we get up out of here, man. Oh, uh, well, make sure y'all check out that growing up hip hop Atlanta, yes, man. Sir. Like, me and Diamond, like, we off and on all the time. <laughs> y'all gonna see, like, this season. Hey, this shit gonna be crazy, Uh-oh. bro. You feel what I'm saying? Um, On the producing side, I got. I got some stuff coming out with um, Future. Let's go. I got T.I. and Casino um, single out right now. Yeah, that's crazy, too. I got, it's a, something big finna happen. You know, Travis Scott finna drop Uh-oh, something. Oh, I'm, I'm about to get exclusive. This is Ugly Money exclusive, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I'm Thank saying? You. you can go get a little snippet. Huh? You go get a little snippet on YouTube right huh. now. Pimpin'. Get where the call, though. Get where the call. What? White T. Wow. Keep playing with him. He about to- Keep playing with oh, it's up, bro. You see what I'm saying? It's up. See how that shit come full circle? Exactly. That's crazy. Shout out to my boy DC Young Fly. Just did his whole, um, well, majority of his whole R&B album. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, I just launched my new bourbon, Majesty. We just got in Walmart, all the Walmart for I need, sale. I need, I need, I need to, we need to have this right next, you know what I'm saying? Because I got my bar made. I got my, my black on vodka. I need, I need my black on, you know what I'm saying? I, need, I got you. I got to support. I, I, I'm going to bring you something please, up. Please, please, please. I got please. you. I we, got we, you. There. we there. We there. Um, I got my artist, Notoria. She got a single out that's popping right now. Shout out Notoria. Yeah, and um, just a lot of stuff in the making, Man, you booked man. and busy, bro. That's how. Yeah. You booked, busy, and blessed. Yeah. And that's all we can ask to be, man. Uh, let them know where to follow you at before we get out of here, bro. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Y'all go follow me at Pimpin' Beats. Um, Facebook at Pimpin' Beats. Twitter, Pimpin' Beats. Everything Pimpin' Beats. Yes, go ladies check it and out. gentlemen. And you can follow me at Ugly Money Nietzsche. That's Ugly Money N I C H E. And remember, the bigger the dream, the bigger the risk, the bigger the payoff. And this has been the Ugly Money Podcast with yes, the legendary. Sir. I'm going to put capital L on legendary. Yeah. Pimpin' Beats. Be safe. <laughs>